Good evening, Free Enterprise fans, and welcome to another race of the Ebony Elixir League. We have Commander Leonhardt and Funnel Cakes of the Battle Cricket Club team versus Fiery Blizzard and Ike here of the Cocoa Shop Quartet. My name is Enji Dave, and I am joined in the booth by our restreamer Neil Bari, our trackers Deckard Smash and Bardic Cannon, and my co commentator Noobtree. How are you doing, Noobtree? I'm doing a great, NG Dave. It is a fantastic night to watch some Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise. We've got a heck of a matchup set up for you on this twin cast tonight um and look at these objectives here we've got a uh, pretty much a required darkness crystal making us have to go to the moon to complete this seed what are your thoughts on this ng oh hard required moon always a fun time uh, especially with this edge hero that can make you know super speedy hero can make certain things more interesting yeah, and it takes the definition of Jet Seed uh, even for further because of that agility there. Uh, we're going to see um, lots of good fights, hopefully some good plays by our runners as well along the way. Um, I'm pretty excited to see who we're getting uh, starting out alongside that edge as well as that key item. Agreed, and honestly, what could be most interesting is Edge's starting weapon. We Those are the C-Necky flag. Yeah, you, you can start out with a claw and be wondering where your damage is coming from or get yourself a back row ready with that boomerang or full moon right off the bat. Right, and pair it with the assassin dagger. Edge could do damage immediately. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things I like to do when I see Edge in the beginning is maybe try to do a cheeky run at Eblin Castle, get all those trap chests out of the way because, hey, we've got a nice uh, starting kit of hourglasses. And like you said, that assassin dagger, might get some swoons off on some of those harder to destroy bosses. Right, uh, swooning the mad ogres in particular, which also a good source of Bacchus wine because Edge could steal them from those mad ogres. Yeah. Why would we need to steal Bacchus wines here? What What's keeping us from buying them in the shops like normal? Well, the shops, they had some supply chain issues and, well, the J items just didn't show up. Oh, so those J items, they're not going to be available like normal. Well, we'll see what our runners decide to do now, because we are off. And let's see who's greeting us in Baron Castle. That's a monk, Magus sisters, and I guess Ooh. I know we're getting our starting money. Yeah, it looks like we might avoid Eblin for a bit if we don't have to go there. Earth Crystal uh, is very, very interesting to start out with. Um, having access to all that money right away. And uh, the shops, like you said, they don't have the J items, but they are S wild, which means you can buy pretty much anything anywhere you go as long as you get there. I know. Equip, not every piece of gear is guaranteed in the seed, but every consumable item, aside from J items, of course, will be in the seed somewhere. All right, so let's see where our runners go. It looks like Commander Leonhard's taken his own path away from Baron. Everyone else is looking at a... <laughs> There's so many Yangs in Baron Inn. Oh, come on. I was hoping someone would just switch the front character to Yang and sit in the third chair. The, that would be the best meme. Oh, there's Yang walking around on Funnel Cake's screen. That's a very entertaining start. <laughs> well played, Funnel Cakes. It looks like we got a Leviathan in the, the Baron shop for the items. Um, if we find Iridia, that is a great starting summon for her. Just get her a couple levels, and uh, she can take out quite a few of those overall bosses on her own. But we're going to get a very early treasury check from both Commander Leonhardt and Funnel Cakes. Ooh, Murasame in the Troyo weapon shop. Yeah, this was looking a bit weak until those last few chests. And we have, it looks like an Edward on Hobbs. Fiery Blizzard is taking on our Mylon Zed up there on the mountainside. Uh, while Ike here gets blocked by the NPC lady in Troya. That was honestly uh, on the low end of treasuries. That was probably a neighborhood of 200,000. Yeah, not not the greatest, but early on, I guess it's not, you can't complain too much. The, the seed did give you some money and said, here you go, enjoy. All right, Commander Leonhardt picking up some uh, Hanzo gear for our edge. Uh, Fiery Blizzard completing the fight on Hobbs, taking that Edward with him. Hopefully, we get to see some uh, some Spoonie Bard action, but until then, we do have a starting Dancing Dagger, which is a great weapon. 
to start out with. Yeah, one of his best choices for starting weapon. Oh, there's Bahamut. Yeah. There's the big summon. Go to the <laughs> go to fast shop and you've got it. Yep, Leviathan's gonna. Um, we're probably gonna take a flyer on that. And uh, we're about to see our first dive into Antlion Cave. Let's see who's chilling in Antlion's spot. Uh, Fiery Blizzard making some aggressive plays here, just clearing immediately, not even bothering to check the Earth Crystal. Yeah, I didn't. And rewarded here. Yeah, with that that edge starting out, you just take off that dagger and throw a flame out. Calcabrena's going to go down before it become, can become Calcabrena. And that's one thing I, I have noticed, watching so many different races, there's not, like, back in the day there used to be, for some tournaments, one specific route that seemed to be the best. With these flag sets, you, you'll get a Legend Sword in Antline if you go aggressive there, like Fiery Blizzard did, or you can take your time shopping at first, build up that, uh, that repertoire you have of weapons, and just move forward. It's, it's always interesting seeing various runners take these different routes. Yeah, like, for instance, Commander Leonhardt over there doing the Eblen dive, fighting the Stalemen right now with those Hanzo swords just smacking away, getting those uh, those chests knocked out very quickly. And we have a Life Stick and Kaipo. And a X scout in the first chest. Ooh. It's, it's a dart, at least. Yeah, that's some good damage one way or the other. Uh, Ike, you're going to go pet the doggo. Yes, this is also an aggressive play, and I am all for it. Oh, and Vanilla Chest. Uh, I believe if the Assassin Dagger is equipped, this will swoon proc. Ooh. Really? It, maybe just one. The edge is pretty fast, being Anchor, so it oh. might have just... It was Dancing Dagger equipped. Oh. <laughs> well. <laughs> Never mind, then. The Flame Dog got to, to do the, uh, the hustle instead of swooning. All right, and following up on the uh, the shopping, Funnel Cakes has now decided to go check Hobbs as well. Uh, Fiery Blizzard deciding, I'm not going to quite go through uh, Tower just yet. That was too quick. I did not see what that was. Baron that was Key. Baron Key. So rewarded for taking the... Rewarded for taking the doggo early. And this... Ike here, going to climb the tower. Uh, you know, I kind of agree with this move. You're getting a chance to look at two more characters. Um, knowing that C No Dupe is on, it is possible we get just, uh, you know, another Edward or something. But there's also that X Cal that we saw in Castle Eblen, and the chance for the guy to be available. And speaking of which, Commander Leonhardt's getting a red tail out of Eblen. Hmm. There, there are definitely a lot of progression available. Um, once we get that hook for the rat tail, uh, I'm wondering what we should be looking for here. What would you be hoping for looking in this last trap chest in Evelyn? Maybe key would be nice. Or the so darkness, could... I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd hope for magma beforehand, so that way we can get underground now. Um, a hook, though, if you get a hook before Magma, with this team that you have so far, what would you think about taking that hook route dive? This team, uh, maybe if it's like something super free at the end, but I might just take traps. Well, we'll find out shortly. It is a package. Okay, one for the pile. Yep, the, uh, we found that uh, order of J items that went missing in shipment. Uh, Fiery Blizzard taking on Asura at Fabul. And Ikir found a Dark Elf in the tower. Yeah, this one... It, definitely doable. Might take a little bit of time, but um, I'm not quite afraid of Dark Elf there. Uh, the transformation, I'm not sure what the Blizzard does here for damage uh, whenever oh. he switches to the D-Breath. 
Uh, Dark Breath does percent base damage. It's 20% of, of your party's max HP. Oh, so it's something that you can definitely handle if you have enough cure potions, even without a white mage. Exactly. All right, then. 25%, my apologies. It looks like we found our darkness crystal at Fabul. Oh, we we can have a jet on our hands. <laughs> Would you like another monk? Yeah. Send him over to Baron Inn. Join with the other Yangs over there. And yeah, the yeah, uh, jet. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, the convention's that way. <laughs> they do have that third chair open. Yeah, checking the moon right now uh, not only gives you that character check, but with the uh, K-Trap flag on, we do have that little Lunar Path uh, hairdryer box available as well. And I do believe Fiery Blizzard still has all three of those hourglasses. Uh, Fiery does. I believe Commander's the only one to have used them all, or any of them. And uh, Edge having a family quarrel, it looks like, in the Baron Inn. So that's what's behind the Yang. It was King and Queen of Eblin all of long. Yangvention23 by Paradox TXS in there in the chat. Thank you for naming this seed as the Yangvention. And the other half of four. So we are a we are a magma key from Go mode. Absolutely. Yeah. You. We may have t uh, spoken too soon earlier when we said, hey, this is this could be a jet seed with a different definition. It is turning out to be a uh, key item frenzy of the key items we need. Oh, there is a quack kid in tower. And great news for our runners. Bygen is going to be off the table for the moon. And that definitely makes those spots a lot more manageable in theory, because we don't have to worry about three large hits coming at you at the same time. And, okay, this is not place paying off huge. That's a Palom and a Rosa. Yeah, we've, we've got your White Mage. We've got your AoE ready to go. Um, now we just need some levels, and we are zerking, blinking, and quaking everywhere. Fiery Blizzard is opting to launch that big whale. We're going to see um, what we have on top of the moon at the Lunar Deus right away, hopefully. See what kind of character we get there. And then, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think it is a good play to do those hair dryers on this one. Yeah, we got a jet like this. Uh, stop them and shove an extra 50,000 XP into this party. Seems pretty good. Absolutely. Uh, but, uh, Leviathan here. The magic here is quite high. These ice twos are going to hurt. Yeah, that... I kind of wonder, would it be worth it to use a Star Veil here? Yes, not even a question. <laughs> yep, because... I'm now seeing that. <laughs> That's definitely, yeah. that was very quick. Uh, the speed here, I believe, is pretty high as well, so. Yes, it is. Yeah, this is a good spot to throw a Veil because not only do you stop damage to yourself, you're also dealing, you know, 1,000 damage back. Commander Leonhardt is headed back to the Yang Convention in Baron Inn, while Funnel Cakes takes his dip into Fable Castle and will eventually be rewarded with his Darkness Crystal. Um, Leonhardt's side, we see Yang talking to Yang to fight Yang. Perfect, makes perfect sense. Everybody was Kung Fu fighting for real. Unfortunately, not to the, the command, so those kicks were not fast as lightning. <laughs> No crystal ring to make that happen. All right, and it looks like Ikir is doing a second attempt trying to take down that Leviathan. We'll see uh, if the strategy changes here. Yeah, the, the strategy for this Leviathan is get a veil up immediately because bad things happen otherwise. Or you can just go to the moon and get Blarg Kid. Rydia available at the Lunar Deus, this is going to change a lot about how Fiery Blizzard routes probably. Seeing that much power available on the table now, um, 
Yeah, absolutely. Go do those hair dryers. Get those levels. And Funnel also picking up the Darkness Crystal. Yep, going straight to raise that Lunar Whale. Uh, we have uh, Commander Leonhardt grabbing that Adamant from the Baron Inn as a reward as well. And there we see it. Ikea is throwing the Veil immediately. Great play. The, the, the Tidal Wave can break through it, but um, much like the uh, Deep Breath that you told me about, I believe Tidal Wave is only percentage-based damage as well. It's 25%, so it would take five Tidal Waves to take Edge out. Because... <laughs> Yeah, Super Nintendo math, I believe, was just a little bit off uh, in favor of the player most times. So uh, 5 times 25 equals 100 for Leviathan in this case. Uh, it's more floating point risk to take a stinky so we just do an integer. <laughs> All right. Seeing another set of dolls on the screen for Commander Leonhardt. Oh, we are going to see some kicks, aren't we? Looks like it. Nope, planes gonna happen first. This Leviathan fight is going much smoother this time around than the previous one. Now, speaking of uh, forge gatherings for those key items, uh, Edge has a pretty interesting set of uh, forges he can hey. receive. Hey, you've got the Sunrise Boomerang, which is a high power backer weapon. You have the Mitsuno Kami and the Sasuke Katana, both just high power ninja blades. And my personal favorite, the fourth most powerful one, the Scrap. I was hoping by not talking about it, it wouldn't scare it away. <laughs> we don't want to, uh, what is it called? A commentator's curse? Oh, no, I'm all about the commentator's curse. <laughs> I care getting through that Leviathan fight much easier this time. Let's see what the reward is. And think of rewards. We saw a pan from the hair dryers. Ooh. Just a Dragoon Lance, so... It, ordeals? That's what it's looking like. I don't think there's anywhere else we can check. Baron Castle is a potential uh, drop from Magma Key. Castle. True, I forgot about Baron Castle. Good call. Which could lead to our, our favorite chain, um, Hook, or Harp into Hook, which means that it's uh, demissed at the end of Hook Route, which drops the Magma Key. Oh, that's just rude. <laughs> also, I'm getting, good, I'm getting a good chuckle on Leonhardt's side. Has the perfect strategy right now. Go before villain. Yeah, that's always the... <laughs> that's always the best way to describe how you want to uh, beat your bosses. Go before the villainous boss. And uh, yeah, those names are, are, are excellently placed. Now, an interesting thing on Commander Leonhardt's side, he did check the package for the Yang. There is a possibility that Demis does reside in that Kaipo Inn. There certainly is. And I think if it's there, our runners are going to last location it. And I don't blame them. Uh, it is a cheeky check, but it is a very long check with uh, two cutscenes you have to exist through just to get there. And you're not even rewarded with a character because... Well, it's a dude. But that character does get to go up to the convention that they were late for since Baron Inn has already been completed. And they get to take that free uh, free pick of any seat there that they want. The emptiest convention hall I've ever seen. And Funnel Cake's also completing the uh, the hair dryer's chest to get that pan. We find an Avenger in Baron Weapon Shop. Now, with this team that we have here, nothing 
not really useful there except for darts, although very expensive darts. If we get a cane or a yeah. Cecil, we have our Zerk. We certainly do. That being said, oh, go ahead. I apologize. We did see Fiery grab that Bahamut, so Fire Blue is going to have the, the true power of Blarg. Yeah, this is what everyone comes to see, the child destroying things. Yeah, this has been the... This flag has really been Rydia's time to shine. It's also been a time when you get a Rydia hero getting that Mist Whip, you get to see all sorts of different things you can do with that. Mist Whip is a powerful weapon in the front row too, so Rydia could hit things if we find something uh, like a Dragon Whip here early on. Um, but I doubt um, with the levels that they have actually looking right now, Rydia is just going to blarg everything. Yeah, everything here is looking mighty uh, blargable. Commander and Fiery both making the tower play. They'll both end up uh, facing the Dark Elf pretty shortly. Um, Fiery Blizzard likely to have a quicker fight with that Blarg available. And then we get to say hi to the Magus sisters again on iCare screen. And they're like, didn't we just send you off 19 minutes ago? Yeah, why are you back so quickly? And you brought friends. <laughs> uh, Joe, the rat tail was from one of the Evelyn traps. Fiery Blizzard. Gonna... Oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say Fiery Blizzard uh, making Rydia block there. Um, the reason being, Dark Elf has two forms, and we don't want to use that Blarg on the first one, since there's probably not enough MP to cast a second one yet. Well, there's a meat change, and we are winding up the Bahamut. And the true power of Rydia is now shown, doing a casual 3,700 damage early on. I hear through the Magus sisters. Checking out the treasure chest in the small treasury in uh, Baron, and also possibly doing some more money digging in the other treasuries play I don't see often right, but it's it's one that's fairly smart you can see right there yeah. there was about 60k uh, GP in that ju that small area so absolutely if you need some money in a pinch that's a great place to go for yeah. a quick dip into the bank it's a lot of cash and quick because they're all clumped together well let's see who's visiting us on the throne today who's sitting in the castle oh well the dream of a cheeky demist is dead but we do love to see value uh, whenever we watch our runners. So seeing a D-Mist at that throne, ikir has got to be pretty excited. Yeah, get, getting a nice little double out of Baron. It was, looks... Oh, go ahead. No, you first. I apologize. So today. We're going to see how Commander and Fire are going to handle this Leviathan. And what you had? Oh, I was going to say, I have a feeling we will see two different strategies up here on this uh, Leviathan fight, actually. So, thinking in the same train of thought there. Yeah, true. One can uh, summon an angry dragon god. The other one might just throw that X out. Either way, lots of damage available for both of our racers there. 
Now, when I first started playing Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise, it had been several years since I played the original, so I found out the hard way, you don't want to punch D-Mist whenever they are Misty. No, uh, Cold Mist can hurt. Yeah, absolutely, and that's, uh, usually when you see D-Mist in, in the later spots, like at the Moon or uh, King of Fey March, you're a little bit hesitant to zerk anyone up because you're not going to do enough damage to get them down before that mist goes away. Here, it's not so bad because you just wait a few moments and you're back to uh, punching them in the face. And we see Funnel getting the rat tail as well. You see what our rewards are from Baron Castle. It's another kid. The same kid that we already have though, so they'll just uh, kind of clone themselves together. Fiery Blizzard getting uh, the Dragoon Spear as a reward for blarging the King of the Summons. And we, we did see Funnel swiping a few Bacchus during that Mad Ogre fight. Yeah, that's a, that's a great play since those J items do get lost in shipping. Uh, so having that available for Zerk in a pinch, excellent play. Heads up as Judge and Phineas said in the chat. Baron Magma has got the Magma, so uh, we are in no mode here in the booth. Yeah, I care with that Baron key does have a uh, progression lead at the moment, having a little bit more of the world open. Let's see what uh, Rydia's mom has in Mist. And she's got. Mm. So about that bard. Yeah, let's uh, let's speak of how spoony Edward can be here for a moment. So, oh, how do you like doing? How do you like weapons with maximum attack power? Oh, I like them very much, though, so, NG Dave. Why do you ask? Because if, if you like high power weapons, uh, do I have one for you? It's a yeah. uh, oddly serrated piece of uh, silverware. Yeah, one you do not want to eat your cereal with because it can cut pretty hard. Now, as far as I'm aware, I didn't see I Care Peak Hops yet. That it, that sounds correct. Yeah, because I Care went straight up uh, Zot. So it looks like maybe we'll get a check here just to see. I can only imagine the elation that you'll feel once you get up to the top of that mountain. Aphelion. <laughs> Curry sits, it's cut for the same crystal as the sword. <laughs> and Aphelion does bring up a good point. As a dart, the spoon does work as a good weapon at the end uh, whenever you have those high HP bosses that you just need to take 10k HP away from right away. Like, say, the Masuna altar that we will be fighting later. Yeah, if you find a Kainazo with a lot of HP somewhere and you know it's fast, throw that spoon. Sometimes it's worth it to get that, uh, that damage down from that wave that they'll put out. That is a good question. I don't know if Funnel bought the Bahamut. I wouldn't think so yet. Not before he went there to get uh, Rydia from the moon. Yeah, Bahamut's on the call list. Uh, well, I stand wildly corrected and I'm okay with it. We love seeing Blar here. <laughs> I didn't know either. I was waiting for the magic menu to show up. So Ike here now pretty stacked as far as his team goes. Um, you're looking at a lot of damage, especially in a couple of levels when Edward gets uh, those multipliers stacked up. Um, Looks like we're buying another bandana for him. Yeah, absolutely. Get that, uh, get that strength plus five gear. Now with this team, my play typically, without the Rydia having on this team having warp, I would probably check out tower. Um, there are four chests there that could potentially have key items. You're looking at at least one, maybe two. Uh, and uh, you got some good levels if you hit that boss spot at the top with a 
decently easy boss. This team should be able to handle it. Um, what about you? What do you think with the, the team Ike here has? See, I, I do like a tower play, especially in this flag set. It's four trap chests, like you were mentioning. Well, you do have warp, so Dwarf Castle is certainly on the table. Oh, Ike here doesn't have the Radiant. Never mind. Yeah, and, and you don't really get warp until level 29 with Palum, and it's it's a little difficult to get those levels on the overworld before you go underground. So, yeah, tower for me would be where I would go. Even if you get to 27 or 28, you should be able to uh, to turn that over into a Dwarf Castle play, keep Palum up, and you'll have warp to get that, uh, that little uh, crystal that's hiding out in Luka Cave. Unfortunately for uh, runners, we are in Fitch right here. We, we know that will not be vanilla. Yeah, I've, I've found uh, a lot of white robes in Dwarf Castle while practicing this flag set. And uh, in the case of our runners here, they have someone who can use it. For me, it's mostly been, uh, been non-useful. For, for my teams. Usually with a Rosa in these flag sets, I think a heroine robe plays much better than uh, having that extra will boost. It does. Like, having the extra stats, the cast stat doesn't matter if you never take a turn. That is true. And plus, Blink and Berserk are the best the best spells you can have in this flag set because like like we've mentioned before plenty of times no j items so you can't buy illusions no bacchus wines and uh having a white mage that goes first putting up a, a barrier that no one can hit you through that's a pretty good one to do as well and, and with pick up that magma heat commander leonhardt will be the first runner in go mode commander leonhardt is dropping that uh magma rock into the well we'll see the uh Earth shake and the volcano erupt behind the village. Well, no one's paying attention to it, and then we'll uh, we'll go down and uh, we'll be cooking with cast iron down there in the underground. I hope so. You're gonna need some good metal to withstand that heat. Yeah, that the underworld is adamant about you being able to withstand that lava flow. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. I take it back right away. I'll quit the puns. No. I just <laughs> never stop. <laughs> I'll leave that one there, says Noob Tree. <laughs> All right, Commander Leonhardt flying across the lava, going straight to Forge. This is actually something that's that could pay off. Hopefully, we'll see what kind of weapon uh, we decide to uh, get from the. Cocal, uh, Cocal Shop Quartet. What will they give us this uh, this evening? Scrap. <laughs> I've never tried to dart scrap, but I know it shows the symbol that it's a dartable weapon. How much damage does it do? Uh, it does literally hundred of damage. Well. I apologize for nothing. Our runners are going to be elated to see that one as well. Uh, seeing Scrap pop up, it's... it You know, it makes sense. It's a balance to the seed. It's been giving us a lot of power, a lot of good characters, and then suddenly... Um, yeah, I, I, Ribbon Quest, I agree. After that disrespect that Kokel showed us, uh, we're not even going to become patrons to his shop. Uh, we No more money goes towards that one. Yeah, we gave you this sort of legend, some quality material, and you turn it into that. Yeah, and the excitement ex exposed, what, like, as he was uh, presenting it to you, it's done. Look at what I've made. Uh, it's it's one that we can put on the refrigerator for later, but we're not taking it on the family trip. Hey, look, a ninja star to make up for the scrap we got. Yeah, this, this, this treasure chest just casually has a better dart that Coco made for us. <laughs> All right, Funnel Cake's now doing the dive into Baron Castle as well. Getting that uh, that Magma Key as a reward should uh, should also put Funnel Cake's in go mode. Hmm. 
But the real moment of truth, who's down here? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Are we about to uh, face a mighty foe that's going to uh, gonna have to wait for us to come back later? Or is this something that we can manage with? Uh, we do, I think Rosa is leveled up enough to have Blink. So if we get like an Octoman, we might be able to handle handle that fight quite well. Uh, That's, I, the right side is free. Yeah, the the ant lion caught my attention right off the bat, though. Um, while not on the moon, ant lion is still pretty formidable in a punchy spot. Yeah, you're right. The ant lion can be rude. That's fast. That's punchy. Ow. We don't have we do have a few ways to get around the counters. Yeah, but the the amount of ways to get around the counters isn't isn't plentiful. Uh, we can dart a few things with Edge, power attacks with Yang, uh, but probably don't want to zerk anyone up here just to make sure that you don't get countered all the way down to zero HP. Well, we didn't come in prepared to prepare for this fight. I'm. I don't think uh, Commander can get an action off with Edge fast enough. Yeah, and Edge being the anchor does mean Golbez is also pretty fast here. Yeah, this is one of the fastest spots in the game. Yeah, that's going to be a wipe. Now, what can we do coming into this fight? to prepare better for this. What's something that we can uh, we can do to kind of cheese this, if you will? If we have the, the piggy spell, we can come in with everyone as pigs. Oh, why why would that help, NG Dave? What, what, what would pigs do? Are they super powerful against Golbez? Well, they're adorable for one. I agree. But they're so ador adorable that Golbez's whole gas just doesn't work on them. Okay, oh. we're getting more serious. The... There's a status priority system in this game, and the par paralysis, or being piggy, makes you immune to lesser statuses like paralysis. Which then give you a chance to kind of buffer where you want to use that Starvel, I'm guessing. Oh, uh, it means you won't get, you just see which two survive, you'll get the action before the first spell comes out, you can get the veil up and watch Golbez blast itself for, you know, four to five thousand with those lit threes. Yeah, and since uh, Golbez in that Asura spot is is there, that magic is is stacked up, like yeah. you said, so much damage. Yeah, you, uh, you saw that virus doing 2200. Yeah, you kind of want to turn those around. I don't think anyone's going to have uh, enough levels to meet that HP pool aside from Yang later on. And even then, by that point, um, it's, it's, it's still going to be taking you down pretty close to that one HP. Commander Leonhardt saw the saw the fame arch and said, I'm gonna go get some levels. So Matthias in chat asked, uh, what is the highest priority status? And Xenocat replied with swoon. Um and it <laughs> That's a pretty big status effect priority. Uh I did not know that that was the one that takes priority over all of them, so that's a little scary for some things. Well, once you're dead, nothing else matters. That's true. You don't worry about being uh, charmed or berserk. Neil Bari pointing out that the tower key popped up in a uh, trapped chest for commander. So we have value going up the tower already. The thing is, does commander Leonhardt need it with the bosses that we saw? Uh, it does get Commander Leonhardt one closer to 10, which will we'll get them double XP. And with Sand Ruby still out there, we might even proc a Sand Ruby outside of that Tower Key check, which would make it to where we need one less uh, boss to fight. Oh, we down on Iker's side, we see the Warrior's chest being fought for some XP, and we see Iker trying to raise some enemies after after defeating him. Why would Iker be doing that? 
Oh, it's just a nice thing, a little parting gift to say, hey, we, we miss you. Here's a life potion in the end. And uh, it also grants double EXP because um, those those monsters, whenever they uh, they get knocked down, a life pot will raise them back up based on the amount of vitality they have in their stats. Uh, the thing is, they all have zero vitality. So they wake up and they go right back down for uh, two for the price of one EXP gain. So they get knocked down, but they don't get up again, is what you're saying. Yep, and we always got to keep them down. Fiery Blizzard doing uh, the DMS check now. We'll see um, what reward we get here. Uh, we saw before it is, in fact, the spoon, which for Commander would be key item number 10. Did Fiery keep the Edward? No, they did not. But we might see a trip back to Miss back to Missidia to grab the Edward. And it doesn't look like it's priority number one. Right now, we've uh, we've got to get access. Ooh, a Stardust Rod on Commander Leonhardt's side. That's going to help someone cast a little bit more Blarginess. So, Bundle and Fiery Blizzard are going to have a slightly easier time leveling this party. They both have 10 key items already. And we have Octomam off the table and one of the easy spots. Almost taken out Villain right away. That's following that advice to go before Villain. Now we go plus before Villain. Go plus before. That sounds very familiar, but I don't want to get trademarked. Neobari, uh, thank you for that correction. If we did cast life two on those uh, villains before we knocked them down, they would in fact get up again and we would have to take them down. Right, that's a basis for, that's a basis for a big grind if you find certain bosses at a high XP spots. Oh, we see Funnel Cakes fighting a centipede. That's yeah, an interesting fight. I'm wondering, it looks like they're trying to steal something from the centipede. Uh, do you know what the steal item is here? Uh, off the top of my head, I do not. I will admit, I have never tried this play before. Ah, you can steal silk webs from them. That actually is a really good play. Uh, using a silk web on uh, bosses will slow them down and make them much more manageable, especially that ant lion. Okay, it's capable to, to steal it. It's possible to steal silk webs. Edge is the Edge is uh, having a bit of a time with it. Oh, our job dwarf is a resource teacher in this seed, by the way. Ike here taking on that gold bez as well. And we have a sparkle at the top of tower. So all four of our runners doing vastly different things. We have D-Lunars up at top of tower, which in my experience can be a bit painful if you're not ready for them. Yeah, this is about, was it 9,500 or so HP a piece? Yes, and that uh, that fire spell, not not exactly something that's going to do a lot of damage each time you hit it, but it does proc frequently and does do percentage based damage. We see Ike here taking a swing at this Golbez, also not coming in with status ailments. Uh, this is going to be a wipe, I think. I don't think Gang or Palom even get a turn. And just to show you the power of this pot, 2,700 from a virus. And the lit three reset the game. That's how powerful that spot is. Yeah, to anyone who hasn't, or to anyone who's newer to for Enterprise, do not underestimate Queen Spot's agility. Commander Leonhardt halfway through the D-Lunar fight, while Fiery Blizzard does the uh, the Kokel check, and we'll be getting the wonderful news that we get scrap. Yeah. 
I believe Scrap is a four power dart. Uh, Commander Leonhardt getting the breath script, so... Ooh. Yeah, you have to reset out of that. Nobody's coming back from it, unfortunately. Now, uh, one way we could cheese these D-Lunars. Um, it is a bit slow in this spot, but when you get close to that script, we we could potentially throw up some Star Veils to, uh, to ricochet that breath back to them. And uh, it's very interesting what that does to the D-Lunars. It turns them from angry skeletal dragons into something much more cute. Ones that we would we would definitely like to pet with our swords very hard. I care making uh, his climb up the tower, checking those chests, getting that tower key will uh, hopefully be uh, making his way through to that tower check to see that Octoman. We'll see if he takes the uh, the top of tower as well. I think we see that play from Iker because Iker is still looking for that darkness crystal. And which, as we know here in the booth, not the right direction, but still respectable play when you're in that position. That's absolutely what you would do. Check as much as you can to get that go mode as quick as possible. Unfortunately, we know that the pan is on the moon, so there won't be that kind of nudging I care back to double defense. Yeah, and I've been seeing a lot of uh, football defense and Baron end fades um, throughout this tournament. Uh, so seeing those plays, you, you've got to respect it because most of the time, if you've got the dupe on Hobbs and it's easier than what you see in Baron, you're not going to check that character to save time. And uh, you want to get that Fabul and Pan check done at the same time. Absolutely something that I've done before as well. That's a hook from uh, top of tower. That is also something that could push uh, Ikir away from that darkness crystal. Uh, that it is, unfortunately. One good thing about the hook, though, it opens up a couple of more shops and key item checks for us. Um, so while there is still potential for progression with that Sand Ruby available there, um, it, it in this case, when we are in no mode about the seed, it's it's a little, uh, a little bit of a, what's the word, bittersweet uh, uh, objective that we got there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, th these are the seats that are interesting. You had early go mode. Now we see how, how do the runners deal with it? Yeah, you've, you've got some tough bosses in their own ways. Gobez, uh, like you said, potentially free, but are you going to be able to get the the setup done quick enough to get Gobez down? And Antlion, we've got ways to deal with Antlion, but can we live through those punches? Can we blink up quick enough? And we have still yet to see what waits us waits for us on the moon. So we we've still got a lot of question marks. Even though we're in go mode, we're uh, we're trying to figure out how to make it work. Power shirt from the tower. That's helpful. Yeah, I am Global not offense. angry at that. Commander doing the sylph cave check. And we see funnel cakes going into the gold beds. Comes in with everyone piggied. Here's the strat. Now, I like to do plays here where I would try to get a turn and just immediately throw up a Star Veil, uh, guessing which character would remain upright. I don't think that would work here properly because, one, you might need those Star Veils in case you don't have enough sp uh, speed to go through the fight, but... How many turns would it take for Golbez to knock themselves down to one HP here? Uh, it does it fairly quickly. This fight only has 23,000. So if you're looking between 2k to 3k, that's about somewhere between 12 to 14 turns, more than likely. And we see coming in with the piggies, Yang, no one got paralyzed, so Yang and Edge 
survived uh, Shadow's Onslaught and were both able to get turns before the Magical Barrage begins. Yeah, and they do happen to be the uh, the more consistent damage. Oh, wow, a 6k. Yeah. <laughs> does not mess around here. Uh, Golbez just told me my math was wrong, and I am here for it. It looks like there was a Twin Harp get on Commander Leonhard's screen. Yep, from one of the chests in Sylph. I like the Sylph play. If you need levels, it, these traps with 10 key items give a lot of XP and can get you an alternate objective. Yeah, and... Funnel Cakes uh, showing us the 10 Drain Spears in there in the inventory there. He uh, gets to the Golbez by darting at the end uh, for 3k damage, and we get a Glass Hat, oh. which would actually be super helpful against that Antlion. Funnel, come on. You know the right play there with the chuck the scrap metal. <laughs> And Fiery Blizzard resetting out of Antlion. Uh, these bosses are not friendly in the Fate March today. <laughs> they're they're definitely doing their best to win win this race on their own. Well, we we saw how friendly the Golbez is if, we, if when you once you get a veil up. And there is the piggy, so we know Fiery is going to attack that Golbez very shortly. You know, is there an item that would potentially help basically make it to where Antlion couldn't really hurt us that much? There is, but it's a J item. Yeah, that's uh, one thing we will miss about uh, having those JMs available. You can't really purchase Moon Veils, but you might get lucky and find one at one of these boss spots. And uh, even and though you're dodging everything, you're still going to hit, hit by those counters, but it's much more manageable if we have those. Honestly, I think you just throw the Moon, have Radiant throw the Moon Veil and let loose the Angry Dragon God. Yeah, that's probably the best play here if we had one. But we're not here about ifs. We're here to see how we can make this antlion whiff on a normal attack. And the blink spell blocks two of them per cast. Arguably one of the best white mage spells in the game. Yeah. EMP block two lethal hits. The aim's pretty good. I, I looked away from the screen and I just now noticed Fiery Blizzard has three characters up. Does someone have a ribbon or was someone lifed? I think someone was lifed. That's a pretty gutsy move. Ribbon, ribbon Quest pointing out in chat that Edge does get the image spell, which is a self blink that absolutely can help uh, save this team from Antlion as well. Yeah, we see Funnel with blinks up on multiple characters. Antlion doing its best to get through those blinks. And Rosa being fast is super helpful here. I do want to point out, Commander Leonhardt, check in that Sheila 1 check real quick to see what we have in uh, Fable Castle. Also set up the Rat Tail check um, before heading here. The heads up play in case Sheila gives us the pink tail. There is a protect ring, which will protect you, but does not uh, provide progression at this point in time. Antlion still trying to punch through those blinks. Ike here doing the dive into Sylph as well to set up Sheila 1. Now we're getting some friendly targeting on Final Cake side. Antlion just keeps punching the blink. That is what you want to see in these types of fights. Uh, 
the characters that you know will not take damage, you want them to be the ones receiving those attacks. And Rattail giving us another chunk of money in the form of a crystal sword. Funnel through the ant line. First one done with our fame arch, fame arch bosses. That, that is uh, three objectives with three more to go. Having that darkness crystal, more than likely, I would I would head up to the moon and start uh, going after those bosses right away. Yeah, Ike here fighting the Toad Lady chest. I believe this one's inside oh. Sylph Hut. Commander Leonhardt looks to be the streamer of the people because we are about to get a harp check in Cave Magnus. It is an objective. And could lead to the Sand Ruby. That is true, in which case we will have just three more objectives on Commander Leonhardt's side as well. That means you could potentially just avoid the Fae March entirely. I say potentially because we still haven't seen Pain Man. And the moon is a pretty big place. And Pain Man at a value, that does some work. Yeah, I believe uh, but the cave value and the Fame Arch King spots are the highest damage dealing spots for DKC. Yep, 1150 to 1300. Oh, do I have those numbers memorized? <laughs> there's a uh, th there's a, a thing I seem to notice anytime I watch someone run one of these seeds, and I see DKC in one of those spots, just an instant reset, or they say nope and just cast exit. Um, I think there's a general consensus that unless you're over level 50, you don't touch those spots. Oh no, Commander yeah. Leonhart wiped at Dark Elf. Oh no! What? When was the last time he th did they save? Oh, but but it's fine. Here's a uh, here's our favorite DJ Spoony B to save the day. Oh, okay. Well, Edward, play us some music, please. Tell us what kind of song you're gonna play to restore our life to our team. Please make it great. All right, it appears that we have Crystal Crystal in Cave Magnus, but we got some good jams from uh, Link to the Past there. Oh, that we did. Uh, that's interesting, getting the crystal here. Are you supposed to get that after you finish your objectives? Yeah, that you would think that would be at the end of it, but I believe this flag set, Z, Z, 
Z decided to take a little bit of a vacation. So instead of having to fight Z and getting the crystal at the end, we get six objectives and we win the seed. Um, crystal Crystal being there means we can go check to see what's going on uh, at the bottom of the LST. But from what I hear, we don't find anyone there. Hmm. You're saying sometimes Z takes a vacation. That's what I've heard. I've never seen it myself. I've thought about trying to check it out, but um, I just, I it feel a little strange going in there and nothing being there. Almost kind of haunting to me, at least in my opinion. Besides, I also uh, hear that there are some Fusoyas hanging in the background with Z, maybe playing uh, some uh, Connect 4 or chess in the back. And I don't want to interrupt those games. Yeah, all those... All those moths would clean you up if you went back there. <laughs> now, we're seeing Funnel Cakes get through CPU. Um, CPU, not not a difficult fight, but can take a while based on how much HP they have. And with the power that you have with Rydia, you, you kind of want to use Blarg. CPU doesn't like that. No, once you take out the front orb, CPU gets angry and starts throwing globes at you. 199 of them, to be exact. Sounds like a bit of overkill. Exactly. In some spots, you're looking at four nines hitting your uh, characters. But uh, for Funnel Cakes, that was no problem. We got rid of uh, the cave value objective and got a tiara as our reward. I heard you wanted your Blargs to be even Blargier. Here you go. Absolutely. Uh, I've, I've seen so many runners also use the uh the tr alongside a heroin robe on Rydia because it cancels out that negation of the the minus stats on wisdom but you get to go fast and more blarg is always better when it comes to fighting big bosses i see you subscribe to this is the Rydia ascribing to the uh, theory of more daka absolutely um why hit once when hit twice do good? That's that's how I've uh, how my brain describes it. It's a good way of thinking. Absolutely, and another good way of thinking, at least in my opinion, is uh, more music is also great. And I care is going to give us another display of that last battle music from the link to the past here momentarily. They're checking the cave Magnus to get an objective off. Commander Leonhardt's fighting CPU, and soon, like, we're gonna be quiet again and listen to some awesome jams.
Mike, you're not even giving Rob Bob a chance to explode. Yeah, what a what a great play there by I care just knock Mom Bomb down as quick as possible. And what we can see of these move objectives so far, we yeah, we're looking at not overly difficult, but just rude and slow. Yeah, Luge appearing in the White Spear Altar, like you said, not difficult, but having to fight two battles, going through some scripts, because they are fairly fast if you can't get enough damage on them. Um, and the CPU at Cave Bahamut taking a while, especially um seeing Commander Leonhardt kind of doing some sort of grind on those globes. Um, why would they keep knocking those uh, globes out there? Uh, what we're looking at here is the uh, old orb grind. Oh, so each of those orbs do give you a lot of experience. Plus with that double uh, XP for those key items. Yep, this makes sense to me. Um, Keep using those life pots, bring everyone back up, and uh, shouldn't have a hard time if you find a rough boss later on. Although, Commander Leonhard having some rough luck with these globe targetings. And they just keep going after Edge. Yeah, that Edge has had to deal with a lot of roughness this scene. It has to be the hero. Um, got in an argument with his parents and Baron in early on. Well, I, they were crashing the monk convention. You know, I can see your point. I, I respect it. Yeah, I think that was where I, Mom, Dad, you're it, embarrassing me. Go home. I'm cosplaying as a ninja. Now, Funnel Cakes just finished up that White Spirit Altar fight and received a power robe. Um, but the most important reward here is that we are one objective away from completing this seed. Um, we're about to check that Mazamune Altar. What bosses do you not want to see there? Uh, Dark Knight Seth will be bad here. And Ike here now doing football defense, discovering darkness was available uh, very early. Yeah, that's it. As a runner, you probably feel a little bad about that. You're thinking, oh, this has been available the whole time. But the fact that you have go mode now, you've already got one objective completed. You should be able to... Uh, to turn this around, take up uh, uh, a few spots. Ooh, a wyvern with a lit one. <laughs> that could have been rude. It wasn't. Yes, that is a very, very fast uh, witch burn that came out there. Um, although my favorite that I've actually seen finally is wyvern with retreat. Uh, that's a good one. I'm a fan of the boom vern. <laughs> Just show him, like, get out of my house, and it explodes on you. That. Yep. I'm not sure how you would handle that here at this spot. That's fine. It's single target. Oh, it is single target. Yeah. Ah, well, in that case, you handle it by uh, just sitting there. Yeah, one of your characters gets uh, turned into a small pile of dust. The other four are fine. And in, in this case, it looks like Edward might have been the one that uh, would have been targeted. He does seem to be the main target for uh, all of those large attacks and the nuke again. I, I can only assume someone... Probably Rydia slapped a nuke me sign on Edward's back. Yeah, and Edge also getting targeted here. Just enough HP to stay alive by 236 more than he needed. Yeah, Wyvern is quite speedy at this spot. Uh, I, I do think this is manageable for sure, but seeing all of those nukes come out in quick succession, uh, it's a little scary when you've got that gap in inputs. Right, the, the bright thing here is it can only kill one person at a time. That is true. And what we have seen here is they can also kill one wyvern at a time. That whole party on Funnel Cake's screen has reached victory. And get... that will be objective number six for Funnel Cakes. Congratulations, Funnel Cakes. It looks like there's an official time of one hour, seven minutes, and one second. And with that, Funnel Cakes will claim the week's victory for Ballon Cricket Club. Yes, and by the sound that I just heard, it does sound like we are joined by Funnel Cakes. Welcome in and congratulations. Uh, thanks. So, Funnel Cakes, uh, you see the darkness, you see both halves of Forge on the overworld. What are you thinking? I'm panicking on where is Magma Key? 
because there is a lot of spots open when I hit darkness, and uh, there could have been some free bosses down in Fey March and on the moon. And we could have we could have really flew. Yeah, and it looked like uh, while you were routing, looking, uh, we couldn't see the panic, especially whenever you found those uh, Hanzo swords early on for uh, Edge. What were you thinking about Edge Hero Start and getting some good gear to start out with? So with Edge just being naturally as strong as he is, I feel like we can take advantage of that and just get him a little bit more. Either, you know, the Mura, a ninja along, plus the assassin dagger you start with, and you can start ripping through checks that are, are real close to shops and things like that and just ways to ways to stay efficient throughout uh throughout the seed and not trying to double back as much as possible. Yeah that sounds like it was a pretty efficient uh routing to me, honestly. Uh some great decision making we saw with the overworld especially when it was that generous when you did find the magma key what was your first thought going into underground um besides forging i just wanted to see what was in fey march because if it was something i had to go prepare for or a dkc on king spot i i wanted to know what my next step was as fast as possible because if i had to start looking for another uh, objective i wanted to start going as fast as as soon as I could. So I wanted to see there, check the warriors for a little bit of XP because I was at 10 key items at that point and just go from there. Yeah, speak, speaking of forge, uh, what do you think of it? You know, that's a, a classic edge forge right there. Yeah, we, we definitely didn't try to commentators curse that in the booth while you uh, you were checking that. So I promise you it wasn't our fault that you got the scrap. I'll, I'll believe you until I do my watch back. <laughs> okay, I, I, can, I can confirm we did not try to curse it while you were checking it. <laughs> Wonderful. Technicalities. Uh, and to go over the Fey March as well, um, whenever you did see that Golbez and Antlion there, um, did it ever cross your mind to start searching for the Sand Ruby or Twin Harp? No, that was, that was what the stack of Drain Spears was for, was to to deal with everything that's not named Dark Knight Cecil. And I was I was pretty confident in my levels. I think I was high 30s at that point. Uh, Rosa, Rosa was fast enough, I think, to keep up with everything I was doing. And so having her to kind of either berserk someone or get blinks off or slows off was kind of my plan going down there. And I was just gonna dart my way through it. And that plan absolutely paid off. Um getting through those bosses fairly easily considering what was there uh, it was a great show that you put on with those drain darts now on the moon when you saw CPU there um, what was your first thought about uh, what you were looking forward to at that Mazamune spot and the white spear spot coming up uh, gauntlets are always scary on the moon uh, evil walls rubies uh, at the very end before I went down to the Masa I I prepared Yang for the emergency Ruby duty of power punching him until until I win the fight. Well, I will say that was a spectacular display uh, on that seat. It was ran beautifully. NG Dave, uh, do you have any more questions for Funnel Cakes? No, like uh, like we like what you said, uh, you ran that uh, very very well. Uh, funnel cakes is there anything you want to say any shout outs or questions you have for us uh no but uh thank you guys for all uh putting this on i i'm always a big fan of of being on on the stage for restreams it's it's a fun amount of pressure and uh i know you guys will do a, a great job and i'm actually pretty excited to look, watch this back and uh and see what other insight i can get from this Absolutely. Well, thank you once again for putting on a, a great race for us. We look forward to seeing you every week that you uh, get restreamed. Um, uh, actually, I do have one more question. Uh, heading into next week, what are your thoughts? What are, what do you plan on doing as far as changing up your practice? Um, who you're looking forward to as your opponent? Uh, for next week, um, it's kind of just looking forward to cutting out long checks. I think that's kind of ha a bad habit I've gotten into is 
things like Zot, while it may feel good to go up there and get the two key items, it's a pretty long check. Uh, running up lower, to lower tower can be kind of slow, even if you're checking all the boxes. It's just trying to, to optimize each, uh, each time I go through the seed and not doing slow checks, even if they might have the same chance of paying out as something faster. Honestly, sounds like good advice to me. I, I kind of need to take that advice as well. I do like my long checks. Yeah, they usually have something spicy like characters, but sometimes you get a seed like this where the only real character I wanted was Rosa. Everything else after my my moon peak was was just kind of extra. I don't. I'm not even sure if I would have taken a Cecil if I got one in Baron. That's an understandable play too. Yeah, you've already got enough power on, uh, you showed it at the end of the seed. So, um, Funnel Cakes, if anything, I wanna say, uh, thanks for showing me how to play a seed as fast as possible here. You did a great job. I look forward to seeing you next week and uh, yeah, have, have a great rest of your evening. And uh, thanks once again for putting on a great show. And you as well, have a good night. All right, that was our winner for tonight's race funnel cakes uh bringing such an awesome display to the table I, it was it was super efficient the routing was crisp in my opinion uh and facing off some tough bosses with no fear yeah showed us that showed us how to get through some of those fights with what might look to be a, a lower power party yeah it, there are some cases where you just need one or two more levels um, but Funnel Cake showed us tonight that wasn't a problem. We got Blink, we got Darts, and we got a victory out of it. And while we were talking to Funnel Cakes, uh, Commander Leonhart finishes up his last objective on the moon with Fiery Blizzard heading back down to the Fey March to take on that Antlion. Right, and Commander Leonhart will likely be hot on Fiery's heels heading down to the march. Especially because we now know where the Sand Ruby was. Where was the Sand Ruby? I think I missed it. It was on Mono Deals, so our runners are Ooh. not finding that. Yeah, that one's definitely not going to be uh, in play here. Uh, Ike here also heading down to the White Spirit Altar to start their Lunar Descent. This is, uh, this is a lot, a lot of, a very, very close race with a lot of skill being displayed here. I do want to say while we're waiting for the results here, let me give a shout out to all these runners, Commander Leonhardt, Fiery Blizzard, Funnel Cakes and Ike here. Um, great runners, so give them all a follow. Our, uh, I also want to shout out our Restream team. We got NG Dave next to me on comms, doing a fantastic job keeping me in line. Nyobari on the Restream, making sure that we're seeing everything happen all at once. And Deckar Smash and Bardic Panda, making sure all those buttons are pressed in a very hectic uh, environment while we watch uh, all these players do so many different things at once. And, I'll give a, and I would like to give a shout out to you as well, Nutria. This has been fun. Yeah, it's been super enjoyable commentating with you. Uh, hey, real quick, I want to point out Fiery Blizzard showing us that congratulations screen on their side and getting first place in the race against Commander Leonhardt. That's a, and we are joined by Fiery Blizzard. Uh, GG's Fiery. Jeez, that was a uh, panic for the Magma Key real fast yep. <laughs> now it was a fun seed i definitely meant to steal a silk web the first time i went up fey march which may have made that a little bit easier but probably not uh i was a little bit interested when the glass hat came up i was like maybe this ant line is possible without it and honestly wasted a lot more time and i should have just gone to the moon and got my levels there like i eventually did but other than that you know quick not too bad darting everything and Rydia has Bahamut so that carries most things and I asked Funnel Cakes this I'm gonna ask you as well uh you get the you know the three key items that show you this is a jet seed super early what are you how are you playing the rest of the seed out <laughs> uh like I'm not so obviously I had to change a little bit once I bounced off that antlion but uh, 
I was basically like, I'm not really going to look for things. I'll go to the warrior's chest just to get a little bit more HP on uh, Rosa, just in case it was needed. And then take on the Fey March bosses. And then once I bounced off Antlion, it was like, well, I'll go turn in the pan just in case that happens to have like an out. And if not, I'll do my original plan of go to the moon, get my levels, and then go return to that Antlion. Uh, a little bit of shame when I saw where in the spoilers that uh, Sand Ruby, well, the Sand Ruby I was never going to get in Ordeals, uh, but the the heart being on that first chest in Sylph was just sort of like a little feels bad moment, but honestly, I couldn't see myself taking that chest anyway. Uh, do you want to know what, which trap that was? It was, uh, was it Toad Lady? Uh, it, just as easy, it was the Centipedes. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, eh, sometimes it happens, but, uh... I mean, honestly, once you get the the adamant the legend sword in darkness and you're just like, where is magma key? It's like, OK, where are the places I'm going to go? And at one point I was like, you know, I'm going up Zot because always pet the doggo and get characters. And then I left myself in Baron Inn. I'm just like, I'll go do Baron Inn. I'll be quick. And then I'll probably just go Eblen Castle just because it's technically really 2K main checks versus Baron Castle, which takes a while. Uh, of course, Baron Castle was the correct play there, but I honestly thought the odds were better off going to Eblen Castle. And again, there was just no way I was going to go ordeals unless that happened to be it. So. Yeah, the... Yeah. Sorry, go, go ahead. But it did start off like you get an edge hero and you're just thinking, OK, well, there's my overworld solved. <laughs> and then you get an Earth Crystal. It's like, do I really want to go go to this uh, Zot immediately to get the money? I was like, I don't really need it. And it, the treasury kind of was bad anyways. I do see Commander Leonhard finishing, so GG's to him. But and, yeah, uh, no. Go ahead. I'm sorry again. It's a very, you know, fast anchor, fast seed, lots of power. So... Thanks for a pretty quick time. Yeah, and speaking of Fast Anchor, what did you think about that whenever you got down into the Underworld, seeing those tough bosses in the Fate March? Uh, Golbez is never... Once you're at that point, Golbez isn't an issue, right? As long as you can remove the pre the uh, hold. And then Queen, he kills himself, so you just need to Star Veil up and you're fine. The Eight Line, on the other hand... Uh, yeah, like I said, that was a little bit of an issue. Maybe a Silk Web Steel in the beginning may have made that more plausible. I was hoping Edge would have Image by that point, uh, but it wasn't to be. And ultimately, you know, bounced off of it for a bit. But yeah, I mean, the fast anchoring is why I decided when I had the saw the Muras immediately after going to Sodom, I was like, I'm going to buy these uh, just to see if I can get Rydia you know, before Edge and Rosa eventually before Edge, which it did end up happening with the Artemis bows that came out of the seed, but it took a while. Yeah, it's a, a bit of a, a slow uh, build up for the rest of the characters until, I mean, we saw Bahamut in the shop and you saw Rydia and just immediately like that at that point, I believe there's a lot of power there. Um, did you feel comfortable with the team that you had overall towards the end, or was there anything else you would have changed, like as far as characters showing up? Characters, no. The one thing I was afraid of because we didn't have Thunderclaws was an all gauntlet and Masa. <laughs> right. If there if there was an all gauntlet and Masa, the fact that there were no crystal rings anywhere, as far as I could tell, and the fact that there wasn't um, Thunderclaws anywhere would make that real grind. So I was happy to not see that in Wyvern. You know, three roll wyvern. So you saw the 380 damage nuke to Rydia there. Not too much to worry about. But yeah, I felt a little bit silly because it's like I had the plan when I saw the edge hero to go sell silkwebs, and it took me a while to actually go do that. So I kind of just forgot. Well. I'll say that's some tech I, I never thought of. I didn't know that you could still silk webs there. So thanks for showing that off. Um, yeah, no problem. Um, going into next week, uh, do you have any plans to change anything or anything you're looking forward to uh, while practicing or getting ready? 
Uh, I mean, Iker and I have to decide which one of us is sitting out to, and the other person would face Judge Joe. And so Joe and I have <laughs> talked about this and laughed about this quite a bit, uh, <laughs> where if I'm facing Judge Joe, I might just pull the or early ordeals play without uh, having a reason to go up there, just because Joe is uh, Joe's a very tough opponent. It would be fun to race him, but uh, he certainly has more of an edge over me than I have over him. So I will be a lot more aggressive, which may end up burning me because Joe plays the same way. So maybe I shouldn't play aggressive, but if I do play next week, it will be interesting uh, what risks I take or what gambles I take versus not. Well, I look forward to seeing it. Uh, hopefully uh, we, we get to a friendly seed and we have a great show just like we had tonight. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I guess real fast, uh, because I will let Commander jump in here. Uh, I did want to thank uh, Dave and uh, you, Nutri, for commentating Decker Smash and Bardic Panda for, uh, you know, for tracking on the side. I know how difficult that is. Neil Bari for the restream, RPG Limit Break for letting us actually use this platform as well. And hope everyone has a good night. Do the same. And uh, with that, we do have Commander Leonhart joining us after the race. Commander, uh, GG's on the seed. It uh, looked like uh, that fame march was a bit tough, but uh, you you pushed through it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was a rude, rude fame march, no doubt. So um, just a couple questions uh, when you started out. Uh, NG Dave's been asking everyone, uh, how do you feel about that overworld being so friendly? Um, I didn't mind, you know, I mean, I was expecting, I saw the edge and before we even started, I'm thinking, okay, we can go to Eblin, we can hourglass, tear through there, make those checks, get the money we need. Then the earth crystal showed up. It's like, oh, that's really the money we need. Good. I can equip before I go to Eblin. So like, even before I started looking at the bosses, the foot was already on the pedal for the overworld. It just happened to be friendly. It would have been nice if some of those had been in the fame march, but that honestly was not on my mind at the time. Yeah, it's uh, it seemed like there were uh, there were a lot of different ways that this seed could have gone, uh, running around with with different objectives available all the time. Um, something I wanted to ask, uh, you did the moon check a little bit later, uh, yeah. and you had your party set up ready to go when you saw Rydia what was your thought at that point in time um I didn't think too much about it because I was already foot on the gas charging towards go mode like I finally got through CPU on plan Q I'd, I'd like to thank all of those globe 99s hitting Palom appreciate you um so it was already foot on the gas so I saw it and it tripped in my mind that Bahamut was for sale in Toria. So anybody that did take that darkness out of Fabul, go straight to the, moon, to the moon and grab Rydia, was probably blarging things to death. But at that point, over an hour in, it's like, well, it is what it is. Let's just go. Definitely. Uh, Inji, do you have any questions here? After you, after you bounced off the Fey March, we saw you uh, head on over to head on over to Sills. Was yeah, just, well, hmm. was that looking for another for an alternate go mode? It was a combination of leveling and looking for outs to not take on the whole Fey March. I did Tower first with its five checks that turned into six, as so often does it seems when. You don't have the tower key yet. It's probably in the tower, and uh, I'm I'm annoyed by that bounce off D Lunars. I bet ya, I bet ya, that if I had had the presence of mind to check my D mist and not been so excited by finding the magma key in the trash, that a spoon ward would have tilted that first fight in my favor. Because boy, was that close. But yeah, the tower in the Sylph play was a combination of XP and looking for outs. Did anyone do ordeals? Nope. No. 
<laughs> I don't blame him. I didn't do ordeals. We didn't have Tella. We didn't have Cecil. Who wants to sit through that? Not this guy. Sure enough, there's our sand ruby. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, perfectly reasonable that no one finds that. Right. <laughs> but yeah, it'll levels and outs. And then I got my twin harp and it's like, Okay, let's go. We'll check Twin Harp. We'll see if it's a Sand Ruby. And when that came up, it's like, I'm probably strong enough to go after the moon unless it's just as rude as the Fey March, in which case I'll worry about it there. But it's been long enough. But let me check my own tracker. And I got done with Magnus at about 55 minutes and change. So it's like, yeah, I know who else is in this room. I know I'm up against Fiery Blizzard. It's time to get going. <laughs> I wasn't wrong. <laughs> well, you put on an excellent display. There were a lot of uh, a lot of niche tech that I I didn't even think about with those globes uh, leveling up. Um, you, you showed showed off some some great heart against those Fey March bosses, uh, and I think Commander Leon Hart, you did spectacularly. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, do you have anything you're looking forward to next week whenever uh, you get paired up? Uh, any any plans on uh, changing anything in practice? Mm, I'll check in with my teammates, um, see if there's any thoughts they have about what I might have been able to do better. Probably a better perspective on it than I do. But for myself, nothing immediately comes to mind so much. So much of this depends on who the hero is and who that second character is. And, you know, an Earth Crystal start is even more unique. So nothing specific right at this moment. But I am looking forward to next week. All right. Well, we are looking forward to watching you as well. Uh, thank you once again for, for being a part of the restream here tonight. And, uh, and you, Dave, anything else for you? I think, we're, I think we can... Uh... Let Commander Leonhardt go. All right. Well, as Fire Blizzard said before me, thank you both, and Dave and Noob for Tree for taking on comms. Decker Smash, Bardic Panda, splitting up the Kraken to show off four racers at once. Neobari, thanks for the restream. A heck of a roll there. Uh, that Fey March was a thing. And RPG Limit Break, thanks for having us over. Appreciate it. All y'all, this is a fun randomizer with a fun community. If it looked interesting to you, come on by. We'd be happy to show you around. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Commander. My pleasure. <laughs> and we are joined now by Ike here. Hello, GG's. GG's. Just a... I just want to say first, just, just a rough bit of luck on that Darkness Crystal. You know, I, I felt really good about my opening round, especially when we got the magma. I felt was really early. I'm like, yes, I think I'm, I think I'm ahead here. And then I find that darkness crystal is just like a gut punch. Like, oh, could I have this so early? I bet everybody else did. Yeah, I, I think a lot of us have been in that spot where we, we, we make some, some plays early on that feel really great, and then suddenly you find go mode. It's somewhere that was super early. But honestly, I. I don't blame the way you ran that route. It, I probably would have done the same thing. Hey. Yeah, I think you it was like the, the oh, Mirror Same's. Because I, I told myself, it's like, okay, we got Earth Crystal. I'm going to go check Teroya and just see yeah, if there's Mirror Same's or Mass Beans there. I'm looting the treasury, getting them going up. And they were there. And so I went there. And I probably should have kept continuing the route. You know, I checked the character and got the Edward that was Spoon, but I stopped it there because I'm like, I can go underground. I'll just route that in, but we'll end with Sheila 1. And yeah, burned me pretty bad, but it happens. I mean, it's all, all about routing. You have all the choices to make. Didn't work out for me this time. So... Uh, I did want to ask you a bit about um, your thoughts of when you finally got to Fey March. A uh, little bit of a tough spot to run into, seeing that uh, Golbez on the Queen spot and Antlion on the King spot. W what were you thinking whenever you first jumped down on that teleport platform? 
Oh, I saw that. I'm like, oh, Antlion sucks there. He, he's going to be hard. Uh, I'll probably need to come back for him. But let's see if I can get the Golbus. If I can get a Star Bale off. And nope, I could get a Star Bale off. So I think I just took the one shot at it, reducing my speed to try to get every, or making my speed faster to try to get an edge to be able to take a turn. But no, it just wasn't happening. So I was bending them until like everything else was done, hoping to find maybe other objectives or crystal rings. By crystal rings, I could probably get through that one. And I didn't find a single crystal ring in the seed. I think I checked all the shops unless I just overlooked them. Uh, I don't think anyone found them unless they were in the hook shop. I checked. They were not. So, okay. There were no crystal rings unless they were in chests. Uh, going forward, looking at the uh, the the sea hero with, with Edge starting out, um, is there any way that you will play it different seeing that edge as your hero with that fast anchor going into uh, those tougher bosses at the end? Um, well, yeah, I, I had a plan for Antlion, which was, you know, get, uh, I bought all the, um, the drain spears and that was my, my goal there, which is like try, throw drain spears, uh, power with cane or, or not with cane with a uh, Yang and, uh, maybe see if uh, people can keep them up, get some quakes off. So I had a plan for that one. I had no plan for Golbez except find crystal rings and maybe find another objective, <laughs> which I, I did eventually. I was playing through it while we were off. I found the Sand Ruby on Ordeals, which is another thing I faded. <laughs> and I wonder where the Legend Sword was. I did not find that one. I would laugh if it were up on hair dryers. I, I do believe Pan was on hair dryers. Uh, I think did you use Legend? Legend? Uh, Antlion? Oh god, I skipped Antlion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, you didn't miss much of a forge. Uh, well, it's an objective, though. That would have been another Fair. good one to do. But wow. You, you yeah. weren't missing much in the way of firepower. It was scrap. Okay, well, I, I, I completely forgot that I didn't do Antlion, because I didn't do anything up there besides get the Edward and go, because Spoon. Okay. Uh, well, I, I have done that before. It's not the first time. <laughs> but, yeah, okay. yeah, so I missed, what, three three key items, major key items in the three overworld checks I didn't do. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that it happens. overall, you, you ran very well. Starting out, you were, like you said, getting underground as fast as possible. Doing that Baron play was was a fantastic choice. Uh, so I think you, you put on a pretty good display to, to show us, hey, routing doesn't always have to go the same way. You don't have to clear the whole overworld at first uh, to, to be able to handle some of those bosses down below. I'm glad we were, put on a, we were able to put on a good show and display some different routing things. I'll have to watch it back and see how everyone else did. Uh, going to next week, are you looking forward to anything in particular? Any any plans to uh, practice on something specific or change anything in your in your play? Not really. I've been doing a lot of practice seeds of this, and we're still trying to figure out whether it is Fury Blizzard or myself who are sitting out next week. Um, we haven't decided yet. We'll have to soon if I our things tomorrow. Um, otherwise, I'll just, uh, I know next week's going to be really rough if Judge Joe is running, because Judge Joe is really good. Yeah, well, one way or the other, we all know here in the booth and here in the chat watching, you're going to put on a great show. Everyone here tonight did fantastic. Uh, I look forward to seeing what you bring next week, uh, whether you're sitting out or it's uh, you taking on uh, Judge Joe. And then, uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll we'll let you uh, handle things from there. I'm, I have faith that you're going to put on a, as great a show then as you did tonight. That's all we can do is just keep on good shows. But yeah, definitely a uh, big thanks to the Restream team for putting this on. So, Angie Dave and New Tree 87, thank you for the commentating. Tucker Smash and Bardic Panda for the tracking. Nayobari for rolling that great seed. Look forward to more of them. Well, thanks, everyone. Thank you, Iker. All right. And uh, Ninja Dave, do you have anything else that you would like to say at this time? Uh, honestly, I, first off, I would love, I want to give a huge shout out to all four of our honors for putting on just an incredible show throughout this seed. Manly and Heart, Fiery Blizzard, Final Cakes, and Ikira. Make sure you give all of them a follow. 
And I'd like to give a big shout out to RPG Limit Break for hosting us. Yeah, it's so gracious of them to let us use the channel to put on these these shows. Every time I watch a race uh, on any of the channels, we always have such great performers on stream, and RPG Limit Break giving us that venue is super, super awesome of them. Um, I also want to shout out Nyobari, Bardic Panda, Deckard Smash uh, for, for taking care of everything in the background and, and keeping it running super smooth. And G. Dave, thanks for, uh, for, for being an awesome co-commentator here and uh, keeping it fun in the booth with me. Yeah, yeah, thank you for the good time. Uh, we are not... While well, this race is done, uh, Free Enterprise is not done tonight. Yes, we we do have uh, another race going on. Uh, the double header with uh, Judge Joe versus Flurry 14 over on uh, Free Enterprise. Uh, remember, when we go over there, make sure you don't spoil anything. There's some uh, some admins who will be using a newspaper... To bonk you if you do. And yeah, you do not want to uh, incur their honor. Those newspapers hurt. I've been bonked many a time. Yeah, we um we we do want to give everyone a chance to actually watch the race, and it was a fantastic race. So uh, once we get over there, let's enjoy the tunes that we're going to be listening to for a bit. Oh, and, people, uh, it's even worse. Alcel's restreaming. Alcel pull out the chainsaw compassion if you spoil. Yeah, and so that means extra safe with uh with the the words of what happened in this race tonight. In fact, the race never happened yet. But um yeah, let's go ahead and, and branch off from here. Um, while this raid uh, is about to take off, I want to say thank you all for chatting and watching. We couldn't do this without you all. Uh, join this uh this awesome community at Free Enterprise on the Discord, and uh, have a great rest of your evening. Kenji Dave, you have a great night as well. I thought, everyone have a great night and enjoy uh, Judge Joe versus Flurry. <laughs>